Hello everyone, welcome to the Great Apostate. I hope you're doing well. Well, it's beginning to feel a lot like the end of the world, isn't it? Good Lord, I, uh, oh, sorry, I could spit on my lips. That's a very sexy look for a 50 year old man, which I will be in November. That's right. I hope you're all keeping well, guys. I wanted to make this video because I don't often do this, as you know, make videos on this channel anymore because uh, I lost the love, lost the love of making XJW videos and uh, other things, you know, appeal to me more. This van is so noisy. I'll try to keep it quiet. I'll try not to hit any potholes. Uh, so uh, I decided I'd make a wee video today though because it's election season. It's election season in France, but no one cares. Although I am going to France very soon. I'm going to France in August. I'm going to sit on top of, stand on top of Mont Blanc, going up by cable car. <laughs> Maybe one day when I'm poor, I'll be able to, I'll walk up it. Uh, I'm going to France, yes. So there's a French election coming up, but no one cares. Uh, the French electoral system is kind of, uh, what do they call it? I think it's, uh, it's a system uh, of, um, forget the name of it but basically it doesn't really matter who wins because no one gets a, a majority ever and so it's always coalition governments which means it's always kind of a joke um, and you know and you never get what you wanted whereas we have in Britain we have an election coming up on 4th of July why we picked US Independence Day for our elections is something that is a bit of a mystery to me but what's not a mystery is that everybody knew beforehand that it was going to happen because Multiple police officers who work in 10 Downing Street, which is the, the, the sort of capital of the government of Britain, uh, have been uh, suspended for betting on the results of when the election is. And multiple Conservative Party MPs have also been uh, punished or in the process of being punished for doing exactly the same thing. So that really goes to show you what, a, what an honest and honourable bunch of people we have. The very first thing they, they think is... How can I make out of this, out of this bit of information? I wonder if that would bleed into their actual behavior in real life, you know, in their work as public servants. And of course, not to be outdone, you have the American election. Now, one of the reasons why I'm making this is because, uh, and, I, and again, I'm, I'm, partly I, don't, I shouldn't even do it because XJW world is now insufferably woke. It's all, you know, pro-Black Lives Matter. And do you remember when you idiots were pro-Black Lives Matter? Do you remember that? Yeah, that's right. Did any of you take a knee? Ha ha ha, fuck you, you were stupid. That aged like milk, didn't it, motherfuckers? <laughs> oh, yeah, I put, I'm going to get down on one knee for these communists who will then buy themselves a bunch of mansions. Oh, gee. Imagine if you gave money to them. Oh, I would piss myself laughing. Okay, set that aside. So it's American Election Day, right? America never is outdone by the Brits. They have to have it bigger and better. And I watched a little bit of last night's Joe Biden-Trump uh, debate. It was interesting. It was interesting and I would go, I'd go so far as to say it was elder abuse. It was a very sad experience to watch that. I'm going to say poor man, but first of all, Joe Biden's not poor. He's very, very rich from a lifetime of graft on the public purse and uh, doing all kinds of dodgy deeds in Ukraine. So let's not call him a poor man. Uh, and let's not have too much sympathy for him because do you remember that diary that his daughter wrote, which was fake? Yeah, that diary wasn't fake. And uh, he was super showering with his teenage daughter because that's normal. Good Lord. Let me tell you. Can you imagine doing that? No, I can't either. But anywho, so I saw the debate and I'm, I'm, I mixed emotions about Trump. Do I love him? No. Do, would, I, would I hang out with him? No. Probably wouldn't like his nature as a person. But if the, if the option that you have is elderly, very, very elderly, man with clearly has who clearly has dementia and who can't stand on the stage and whose wife now appears to be running the show uh, versus another very elderly man obviously slightly less elderly who um, is mean but not that mean then uh, I'm gonna go with that one but again I don't get a vote so what's the matter what I think but of course that won't be the American choice because 
Biden is not going to run. Yes, you heard it here first. There's no way they're going to let Biden run. The man's ancient. He humiliated himself on stage. And, and I'm not going to lie to you, he's humiliated America across the world with just the utmost nonsense over the last three and a bit years. It's been, oh, it's just been awful to watch, to be quite honest with you. We've had the debacle in Ukraine, the endless support of Israel. Here's a quick question. Maybe this is somewhere where maybe even the lefties who are still watching this would maybe agree. I, I always supported Israel. Big, big fan, right? Big supporter. Called myself a Zionist. I remember walk, going to London one time, which is basically now a caliphate uh, run by the mayor of London. And uh, I went to London and I wore a whole bunch of t-shirts into these uh, shops with Pakistani you know, shopkeepers. And they're all like, Mossad can do it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was all that kind of stuff. It was like all pictures of like, you know, Biet Shin or whatever it was called, you know, you know Shin Bet or whatever they called themselves. They you know the secret agents before them. And they were like, oh my God, if I'd have done that now, I'd have just been straight up murdered. But it was 20 years ago. It was barely tolerable then. But uh, no, so, I went, you know, you've got, uh, when the, yeah, so I supported Russia. I supported, sorry, uh, I supported um, Israel. And uh, I'll get to Russia in a second. I supported Israel very much and considered myself a big Zionist. But at what point did it have to, did, did like the standard for whether your country was good or not was in how much weaponry it got it gives to Israel? I mean, I'm not. I, I have no animosity towards Israel. I wish them well, but I'm not Israeli. I'm not, and I wouldn't die for Israel. You know, just as Israelis wouldn't die for my country. And yet, my country, we, we fly Israeli flags for the entire summer. Uh, for various strange political reasons. But it's true, we do. Um, but so, you know, take what you like from that. We're a crazy people. But uh, the other one half flies uh, Palestinian flags and one half flies Israeli flags. So it's a very strange time. So yeah, you're, you're not going to get Joe Biden. I, 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 I digressed, sorry. You're not going to get Joe Biden because he's crazy. He's done that nonsense with Russia. Yes. Do I support Russia? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Over over our governments? Oh, now, remember what, what our governments are. Our governments aren't Britain, America, Canada, Australia, the, the, the NATO alliance. That's not our government. We're being told that what we support is the liberal world order. Well, fuck that. No, I do not support the liberal world order. What, do I want my kids trans? Do I want them shown pornography in primary school or my grandchildren in the end nowadays? No, I don't want that. No, I don't. Do I want freedom of speech completely erased? No, I don't want that either. But never mind. So no, I, you, you, you tell me, do I support a rabid nationalist who actually defends his people? Hell yes, I do. Who's got some sensible ideas? Like not transing your children? Yes, I support that too. So that's where we are with uh, with my food, my thoughts on Russia. But don't worry, I know I have been hard on you. I'm mostly speaking to Americans because that's mostly who watch my video. But I know I'm being hard on you. Talking about Biden being a you know a, a semi-intelligent rhubarb and uh, Trump being kind of what Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, but plumper with you know different hair. Uh, so there's that. Uh, he's not really that bad, actually. You know, he's not as bad as, as Mr. Burns, that's for sure. But uh, well, he didn't take a didn't take a wage for his job. Can you imagine a Democrat politician not take not getting paid? Don't think it. Anyway, no, he won't be the. But Biden will not be the leader. It's going to be if I, gun to my head. It's going to be uh, what do you call that idiot from uh, Gavin Newsom? It's going to be Gavin. Old Gav. Gav's going to take over. And there's going to be such a media storm around his young... You, I mean, the guy's in his 50s, but like, okay, he's a good-looking guy for a 50-something-year-old. But anyway, they're going to be like, look at him, he's fantastic! He's the best! He's full of energy! They're going to get him doing, like, like push-ups beside Navy Seals to show how fit he is. Shat shit is going to be... It's going to write itself, let's be honest, right? So they're going to get him to do it, right? And uh, they're going to completely ask you to forget that the state of California looks like a Mad Max movie. It does. It looks like a Mad... I'm going to pull in here for side because I just cut somebody up terribly. Oops. It looks like a Mad Max movie. People, people should be fighting over water in Barter Town. That's how bad it looks like when I see 
can't see it. But it's still, dude, like, it's not, it's not entirely there. It's spread. It's spread. It's Portland is disgusting. Seattle, I know that's, that's California. Isn't it? It's the, oh, sweet Lord. Do you remember, you know, as a kid, right? Uh, I wanted to, to visit uh, San Francisco. And here's the reason why. Because I was told that San Francisco was basically the one city in America that was like a classical European city that was like that beautiful and that everyone should see it. And now, would I see it? I don't think so, you know? I don't think so. I don't think I would, you know, if I could climb around the mounds with human feces and, you know, my, my car wasn't robbed out from under me, you know? But at least, you know, staying, in, staying there is pretty cheap. I can just pitch up a tent anywhere, apparently. But no, anyway, such is life. I'll go back to Britain. Britain has got two people running for power that are likely to win anyway. Only two can win, right? Although we have a guy called Nigel Farage, who is a big friend of Donald Trump and very much in the mold of Donald Trump, sort of. People think he's like a right-wing populist, but he's not really. He's, he's another like, fairly liberal politician. Uh, he's just slightly to the right of the people that are in charge. So of course he's a fascist, because that's how that works. You know, I'm used to being a fascist now, it doesn't even bother me. I've had, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I had a whole bunch of family that I loved. For some of the only people who talked to me after leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses, they decided I was a fascist. Haven't spoken to them in years. Haven't spoken to me in years, I should say. I've tried, but no, no joy. Worst thing was though, they completely ignored my children, you know? Which just shows you like the lefties at their best, doesn't it? You know. We're, we're, we don't like you, but now we're going to punish your children. So my daughter, my teenage daughter, who's you know, just finished school this, this month, um, my teenage daughter, she didn't have any cousins growing up. Not a one. No older girls, you know, that she could hang out with, she could learn from, or just have a fun fun weekend with. None of them. None of them ever, ever had a fucking thing to do with her. That's... So yeah, I'm a bit better about uh, left-wing poison, I must admit. But yeah, so we have the two guys who can run for the... Uh, run for an election in the UK that are likely to win, and that is uh, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, he loves Britain so much that he bowed out of our D-Day memorial service to go home early. But why would you keep, why, why would you expect it? Rishi, they say Rishi's British, right? In the same sense as that you put a dog, you, a dog gives birth in a barn, it's puppies or horses. Rishi is an Indian man. There's nothing wrong with that. India's a lovely country, sort of, albeit filthy, you know? It's, he's a, it's, a, it's a lovely place. It has so much going for it in its own right. But the fact that Rishi was born here does not make him, you know, ethnically British. It doesn't make him, you know, heartfelt British where, you know, he, he cares about the shit that we care about. He just doesn't. If, if you plant me to America, do you think I care about 4th of July? Not in the slightest, you know? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm more right wing than most people who, you know, who, who are in America. You know, but it just wouldn't wouldn't interest me at all. But I'd celebrate it all for your sake. But uh, so we got Rishi. Rishi's not going to win. Rishi, in fact, is probably going to be the hopefully is going to be the first prime minister in British history to lose his seat at an election. Uh, so he's going to lose his 80 seat majority or six, 60 something seat now, and uh, he's going to uh, end up with the Labour Party in power under pardon me a chap called Keir Starmer. And Keir's going to have a majority of something like 450 seats, which basically is going to make him Emperor of Britain for the next 20 years. Keir's a fascinating guy. Keir used to be in charge of prosecuting people in the entire United Kingdom. He was the Director of Public Prosecutions in the UK. The only people that Keir didn't like to prosecute, by the way, were grooming gangs. That is, groups of almost exclusively Muslim men in the, in the Midlands of England who targeted almost exclusively white girls because they said that they were whores and trash and um, pimped them out and raped them for decades. Uh, the, the, the media, including the BBC, covered it up by calling these young victims, oh, there's a carpet cleaner, call, called them child prostitutes, right? Ignoring completely the fact that there's no such thing as a child prostitute, there's only a victim of child abuse and rape, and uh, and that was it. So, but Rishi found it, oh, not Rishi, sorry, um, what did I say his name was? Oh, Keir. Keir, who's named after, it's a funny name you're thinking, right? Well, Keir's named after a very famous Labour politician in the past, Keir Hardy, I believe it is, or Keir Harding, but, because uh, his family are super Labour stalwarts from, from forever, so they're super socialists. Keir's not just a socialist, Keir's actually a, an admitted and continuous Trotskyist. Actually, a slightly, like, side line of Trotskyism that's even more hardcore, believe it or not. So that's Keir. 
I know it's hard to believe all this nonsense is true. So he couldn't prosecute grooming gangs. Who else did he have trouble prosecuting? He had real trouble prosecuting Jimmy Savile. Does anyone know who Jimmy Savile was? Jimmy was a BBC superstar phenomenon in the day. Ex coal miner, ex boxer and bouncer. And absolutely current until he died. Child abuse, <laughs> thick causer and cannibal. That's right. He, Jimmy was so popular that he would just go into hospitals and they would leave him alone with female patients. I swear to God, that was Britain in the 1970s and 80s. And uh, yeah, so that's he couldn't prosecute him either, apparently, right? And uh, oh, oh yeah, this this doesn't cement your your respect for Keir. Nothing will. Keir was also instrumental in helping to try to get Julian Assange moved to Holland on fake rape charges so that he could then be sent to America to serve whatever 1,000 years for leaking the secret that the fact that the American government has been spying on all Americans' phones. But uh, hey, great guy. He's going to be the leader. He's So we're going to be a far left country. And when you watch the news and you say, hey, when, when did Britain become communist? You'll know why now, okay? We're not communist. We're actually not voting for Keir. We just hate the Conservative Party even more. And the reason we hate the Conservative Party is because the Conservative Party got us Brexit. Yay, we got Brexit. We got to leave the EU. We got to take our borders back. And then we instantly allowed one million people a year for the last eight years to come to Britain. <laughs> it's been pissed off. It's making me cough. One million people, right? How is this affecting the UK? I live in a tiny part of the UK called Northern Ireland, some of you know. In my own hometown just the other day, a bus came along and dropped off, must have been a hundred refugees. Just dropped them off in the town centre. And a hotel has closed completely and they're now living in it. Hey, great! Great! And they'll all be moved out and given social housing because we are building some social housing here. It's a boom. You should see it, right? And every one of those social housing homes, guess who it's going to go to? It's not going to go to me. When I was homeless with my wife and two kids about eight years ago, we got fuck all from the government. But no, those people are going to move into beautiful brand new houses and screw the, the rest of us. Screw the indigenous folks. It's, it's absolutely outrageous. And of course the thing is, uh, some woman tried to do like a whole, oh, you're, you're racist because you're claiming that this is the great replacement theory. It's not a theory, it's a fact. But uh, they, uh, they claimed that, oh, you say it's only the white people affected. And she did, uh, there was a journalist tried to catch Kurt Tucker Carlson out on this in Australia, and he absolutely demolished her. He said, it's not all white people. Indians, Native Americans, uh, black people. They're all getting screwed over. So I'm sure you in America who are still watching this at 18 minutes and three seconds, you're, you're, you can tell me the same thing. You can tell me that your towns aren't as safe as they used to be. Murders have gone up. But no, according to a Big Joe, I believe it's the safest time in human history. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you know what? There's a trick to making uh, crimes go down. Just don't prosecute them. That's how you do that. Funny that, isn't it? And we're all doing that across the world, right? So you ask me, do I support Russia? I'd move there. I would move there tomorrow. Absolutely. Against the bullshit that we're doing? Yes. Yes, I would. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's my thoughts on the current uh, state of affairs. I don't tell you who to vote for. <clears throat> vote for the lemon. Vote for the rhubarb if you like. Vote for Keir Starmer too. Oh, it doesn't matter. It do Here's the truth why it doesn't matter, right? And this is, I'm going to leave you with this, right? Oh, there's my finger. My, my pointy finger's out. Here's why it doesn't matter. Because in 30 years, all the people who moved here will be all their children voting, right? And they'll all be voting in America, and they'll be voting in Spanish, right? And in the UK, they'll be voting in Hindi, right? Uh, I mean, last one point I'll, I'll make, which is, I think is fantastic. It's really incredible. So a conservative politician, right? is running in England. I forget his name. He is trying to get the... He's trying to shore up the votes of the Bangladeshi community. Okay? I say, imagine that that's a problem in the UK. I don't have the Bangladeshi vote. Quick, I need them. I need the Bangladeshis. Okay. So he's getting the Bangladeshi vote. So he's doing that, right? By <coughs> saying that only if you vote for me, Bangladeshis, will I raise the issue of 
the damage to the Rohingya Muslims. <laughs> and you're like, okay, that's that's something, I guess. Like, maybe like housing and the economy and the fact that inflation is through the roof and jobs are hard to find and uh, you know my children will never buy a home. Maybe maybe those would be important things. Education, you know, the woke agenda. None of that. No! Get those Bangladeshis! Right? So how did he do it? He did. He legitimately did it, right? By then, in exclamation marks, pointing out that his Labour candidate, who was some lady called Singh, right, would never do this for them, right? So basically what he was saying, right, was, and this is code words, he was saying, vote for me and I'll raise something that you care about. And the other woman won't because she's a Hindu. So you have a white British guy begging the support of non-British Muslims so that they will vote for him and in return he will raise the, the problems of non-British Muslims in a country that is fully 6,000 miles from us and by doing that <coughs> he's trying to get them to not vote for a not-British Hindu woman instead. Welcome to Britain 2024! Like and subscribe if you like and subscribe.